for anyone who knows me, if there is one positional group in all of football, I will talk about until there is no breath left in my lungs. It is a wide receiver position. This latest Lockdown Browns bonus episode covers the wide receiver room as it is now. And we do a feature on the wide receivers at the NFL Combine. Your latest Lockdown Browns starts now. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LOB, the Locked On Browns podcast, brought to you the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day now uh obviously nfl combine week we've been doing these bonus episodes uh threw one in yesterday for the running back position going to a little bit deeper here today we're gonna put a little feature here on the wide receiver position i think this is a market the browns are going to be very heavy in not only in possibly free agency or trading for a wide receiver i also think the browns are going to be heavily invested in bringing in a wide receiver with either their second round selection third round selection, but either way, the Browns are going to double dip free agency and wide receiver. It's a difficult position to be in. The Browns have a boatload of you know resources and certainly money invested in their quarterback, but they need to get that room as good as possible. You should not ever have to say this when your quarterback is making the money that Deshaun Watson is. A quarterback making that type of money is supposed to cover up a lot of warts, but through only 12 games in two seasons the browns don't truly have that answer yet and certainly have not seen that yet from deshaun watson so you know it sucks to have to double down the way the browns have structured contracts they have the ability to double down to make this wide receiver room almost basically fail proof for their quarterback and that should be the intention one of the big intentions for the cleveland browns in the 2024 lead up to actually playing football, the room now. There is no reason to believe Amari Cooper can't give you the same amount of production he has given you his first two years here with the franchise. Um, I know a lot of people question, you know, Amari Cooper, and I know I saw this, and, and a little bit came up uh, on 92.3 uh, with Ken Carmen's show. Look, Amari Cooper has been a number one receiver for the Raiders with Carr, with the Cowboys with Prescott, with the Browns with – Jacoby Brissett, Deshaun Watson, Dorian Thompson Robinson, PJ Walker, Joe Flacco. Look, Amari Cooper has put together two fantastic seasons for this team, and he's been ball player everywhere he's gone. If you want to call him a wide receiver one, you don't want to call him a wide receiver one. I know what we got here with Amari Cooper. Elijah Moore. Look, Elijah Moore. 50 plus receptions. I think he's capable of more. Um, and there is something to believe that not everybody could just easily go out there and play with a different quarterback every week the way, you know, Amari did, certainly the way David Njoku did. Um, the Browns need stability at the position and they need, hopefully, for Deshaun Watson to play 17 games in 2024. David Bell, Cedric Tillman. Look, nothing's going to be handed to either of these guys. There's going to be competition brought in, and these guys are either going to put themselves on par with the competition, beat the competition, or fall below expectations. But it's going to be something that's going to go on. This wide receiver class is loaded. And if you don't want to listen to me or you don't want to believe me, Daniel Jeremiah just put out his top 50 board ahead of the combine. 12. 12 wide receivers were on that list from Daniel Jeremiah. That is one of the highest numbers he has ever put on a wide receiver class in the time he has been doing this. So if you have questions or doubts or thoughts about how good this wide receiver class is, that should squash them right there. The Browns, again, free agency, trade, it's going to have to be something they're going to have to look through. But this draft class, the Browns have some woes in that room. The Browns have some guys that maybe haven't met expectations yet. They can't wait. They can't hope. The window is now. The window is here. The Browns need to bring in more competition. Worst thing happens is you have a really, really good wide receiver room. Best thing? Well, Deshaun Watson goes out there 
and plays like he did in that magical season for the Houston Texans. I know a lot of people don't believe that's capable. I know a lot of people don't believe that's going to happen. And again, the story with Deshaun Watson, if you do not like Deshaun Watson because of his actions off the field, 100%, I get it. If you do not like what Deshaun Watson is making monetarily, none of us can control it. It is what it is. Um, but again, I will continue to say, I think Deshaun Watson was playing a lot better in 2023 than anybody wants to give him credit for. And if I got to stand on that mountain alone, which I have not, and I am not standing on that mountain alone, that's fine. But the Browns are going to be active in the wide receiver market. And it is going to be <coughs> in the way of a veteran. And it certainly is going to be in a way through the draft. This class is loaded and smart people go where <clears throat> the return is. There was a lot to be had in a return from this wide receiver class in the 2024 NFL drafts. The Browns are no dummies. They know it. They are going to be players in that. We're going to get to some of my favorite guys in this class, some guys that I think could be Cleveland Browns targets. We'll continue on here. Your latest Locked On Browns. I appreciate everybody for being along for the ride. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you take that jog you're always talking about? Maybe just take a nap. Read a book. Look, a lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. Always stress for time. You know, parents, husband, looking after my mom. But if I had that extra time, it probably would be used selfishly. And what do I truly need? I'm not sure. What would I know is if I could sit down with a therapist, maybe I could get to that. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins bet on all your favorite nba players and teams with quick bets live same game parlays exclusive props and more just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot fanduel official sportsbook partner of the nba Jeff Lloyd, bonus episode of Lockdown Browns. I appreciate every one of you who make Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. The everyday crowd, if you're not a part of it by now, make a new plan, stand, and subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. Show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. Now you look at this 2024 NFL draft class. Look, Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be a fantastic player. Not a chance in hell. Malik Neighbors, going to be a fantastic NFL receiver. Again. Rome Adunzie, not a chance. These three boys are going top 10. Top 10 is probably going to be quarterbacks, offensive linemen, and wide receivers. Probably only positional groups are going to get drafted top 10. A name that is interesting and is all over the map, and we'll get to here in a second. Brian Thomas from LSU, also a name that I do believe will go in the first round. And that's when business starts to pick up. One of the names that is all over the map and... Me and Pete Smith, we're going to wage some wars on this player this draft cycle. Keon Coleman, you can find him some places as a top 20 player. You can find him some places where folks view him as a day three pick. Keon Coleman is six foot four. And let me just emphasize this now. I don't think the Browns are in the business for Smurf wide receivers anymore. Last two drafts, Michael Woods, David Bell, not small wide receivers. Last year, drafted Cedric Tillman, not a small wide receiver. I don't think it's a game the Browns are going to play anymore. I think they're looking for bigger bodied guys. Keon Coleman, there's going to be questions 
about his athleticism is short area quickness. He does have times where he cannot get off of coverage. Is it a technique thing? Because I'm going to tell you, just by watching his overall tape, it doesn't appear to be an athleticism thing. Keon Coleman has the tools. So is it technique? Can it be worked on? Can it be approved upon? Certainly something to see. He was a track guy in high school, so he should have the ability to run and show well at the combine. Makes the exceptional play. Makes the wow play. Sometimes doesn't always get separation. Doesn't always make the easy play, the simple slants, the crossers that matter. Keon Coleman, for me, if he's a guy that's there in that 55 range, I'm in. Keon Coleman could be a special player for the Browns. Adani Mitchell, he is the bigger of the Texas wide receivers. And again, this is the guy where I would have my focus on bigger guy. Good production, uh, good balance, is able to high points. Certainly a guy that I look to that I think could be a part for the Browns. Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina. The one-year production scares the daylights out of me. Not going to lie to you. Just facts being facts. Um, did have a really nice year down in Columbia. Not sure it's going to be the case. Lad McConkey, smaller, polished, can play outside, can play inside. Got that Cooper Cup Nakua vibe going on. I think Lad McConkey is a guy that's going to go in the first round. He's going to do very well for himself. Xavier Worthy, a lot of people's favorite to be the fastest guy at the combine, but a smaller guy. Just I, I'm not sure that that is the punch bowl that Cleveland Browns are going to be drinking out of. Troy Franklin from Oregon. Love his game. I do. But the further you get into his game, Troy Franklin is an inconsistent pass catcher. That is something that is really difficult to overcome. That is something that, you know, when you put on tape in a room with a bunch of people, you show the good, you show the good, you show the good. And then there's going to be somebody that's going to say, well, let's show the bad. And the drops are bad. And, you know, it's inconsistent. It's something that you, you know, it's going to cause a lot of pause. It's going to cause a lot of hesitation about teams getting ready to draft him. Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky. Love the dude. Just great physical makeup. I think he can play from the outside to the inside. I think he has great run after the catch ability. Yoked up. Interesting guy. May not be the Browns flavor, but going to be an interesting guy. Jalen Polk out of Washington. Look, I am infatuated with the Washington wide receivers. I already told you about Roman Dunzier. Polk is a great one. Uh, Jaden McMillan is going to be a great one. McMillan might be an even better fit for the Browns because I think he can play some big slot. I think he can play outside. I think his athleticism is going to show better in the combine than some people realize that he is capable of. Tez Walker, North Carolina, it was a crazy story. Obviously, you want to transfer the NCA that lets everybody transfer, lets people have seven years of eligibility. Chose Tez Walker to be a test case over some nonsense. He was not good down at the Senior Bowl. But Tez Walker's tape at North Carolina, playing with a quarterback who was probably going to get drafted top five in Drake May, was good. So sometimes Senior Bowl, you get the jitters, and then once you have one mistake, all of a sudden mistakes fester. I'm still in the Tez Walker business out of North Carolina. I think he's going to run somewhere in the 4-4-5 range to 4-5. Big, filled out, yoked up. Tez Walker is a good name, and it's a name that could certainly fit for the Cleveland Browns. Johnny Wilson out of Florida State is really, really intriguing. Six foot seven. Basically, Florida State just ran a lot of slants with him. They ran a lot of crossers. You could throw it over the linebacker because your wide receiver is six foot seven. You could throw it underneath the safeties. Johnny Wilson certainly an interesting name, but what exactly is he going to be in the NFL? And certainly a 40 time will determine that and short area quickness. Roman Wilson. The thing is, Roman Wilson played a ton, a ton at the University of Michigan and had less in all those years he played at Michigan, had less than four 100-yard games total. I like Roman Wilson. Footworks need to be cleaned up in and out of his breaks, um, but it's going to be an interesting name there. Malik Washington out of Virginia. This is a guy I truly, truly like. I think he had a monster season this year in Virginia. You put up 100 receptions on one of the lesser teams in any conference, you're certainly going to get some notice. Big, strong hands. Balls hit his hands. They do not come out. He has great run after the catch ability. Again, another guy who is physically built well, runs like a running back when he has the ball in his hands. Again, not the biggest guy. So that makes me wonder whether or not he's a target for the Cleveland Browns, but it's certainly a guy that I have some interest in. There are a ton of receivers in this class, and I think this is something the Browns are probably going to address in round two or round three. And we'll get to know a little bit more. Braden Rice is another guy. Um, obviously, you know, Jerry's kid. I want to see the test numbers because some of the route running on tape at USC, some of the route running I saw down at the senior bowl, 
did not necessarily mess a guy, you know, mesh with a guy that had the production he did this year at USC. A lot of his touchdowns were on Caleb Williams scrambled, you know, da da, you know, all hell breaking loose. And Rice was the intelligent one, was the smart one to find the open spot. He was great, obviously, on the scramble drill and produced a lot of touchdowns on that in his time with Caleb Williams. That is a fantastic trait to have. It's a really good trait to have. Doesn't always maybe necessarily translate to NFL success. Doesn't really work that way. You know, in the NFL, most of the time when your quarterback's scrambling for his life, your quarterback's not going to get the opportunity to get a clean throw off. It's just the way the NFL is. So that's one thing for Rice. It could work out for him translating to the NFL. It might not work out for him translating to the NFL. We'll see how it works out. But this class is stacked. It is loaded. And there are guys that can come to Cleveland and contribute right away. Right now, my dream scenario is Keon Coleman with the Cleveland Browns second round pick. Can do it all. And even is so athletic at six foot four, 215 pounds. The Florida State Seminoles used him as a punt returner this year. You don't get many punt returners built like that. He did it and he did it well. I'm Jeff Floyd, your host of Locked On Browns. This has been your combine preview bonus episode of the wide receiver position. I appreciate everybody who makes Locked On Browns their first listen every single day. The everyday crowd keeps growing and growing. Be like the everyday crowd. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. Show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on ELOB. Let's go Browns.